Today, we've got something. Uh, don't bite me, don't bite me, don't bite me. Whew. We've got something from a company that didn't expect to make monitors, but they, uh, I guess they do now. It's the Gigabyte G32QC. That's right, the Gigabyte gaming monitor. This will be interesting. If you're sick of seeing that same Activate Windows watermark over and over, snag an OEM license from SCD Key. You'll have a fully activated OS in seconds and you can kiss that watermark goodbye. And be sure to use money offer code GSL for that sweet discount. So we've got a uh, display port cable. We've got a USB cable. So there are USB three ports on the monitor. This is an HDMI, I'm assuming 2.0 port given the resolution and refresh rate of this panel some unimportant stuff and uh yeah monitors under all this i probably should have thought this through a little more than i did and i'm already disappointed external ac adapter i don't like these they're pains in the butts to cable route you know you have to either stick them to the underside of your desk or just kind of let them dangle there and they look awkward dude did you believe that when i said butts you think we're like talking to four-year-olds. So what you were looking at here is a 2560 by 1440 curved, I think it's 1500R, so it's a, it's a fairly curved panel. 1500R, 100 and uh, 144 hertz, I believe. You know, looking at this, I'm kind of surprised they didn't find a way to shove the AC adapter inside the chat. I mean, you can see it's pretty fat there. This is a panel I would expect to have an integrated AC adapter. I'm gonna be a bit picky because this isn't super slim. It is kind of up top, but elsewhere it's a little chunky. Now, quick tip for assembly. If you're doing this by yourself, lay the monitor flat screen down, preferably inside uh, part of its uh, casing. And then you can lock in the neck. If that's what you wanna call it here, the stand part of the stand. That was kind of redundant. This monitor requires four screws. I like the ones personally that just kind of clip in and out. You don't need to manually screw anything in, but uh, I mean, it's only gonna take you a few minutes max. Now these are the feet, or I guess this is one big like foot that's connected here at the center. Uh, a screw is already pre-installed and you just gotta snap it in like that. Torque it down. Okay, pick her up, throw that down. How's she look, Nate? Pretty beefy. And see, this is what I'm talking about. It's pretty thin, especially up top. Now, if the whole monitor was like this, I mean, there's no way you can fit an AC adapter, but this is pretty chunky, and that extends uh, fairly far down here, especially where the, the VESA mount, uh, VESA support is. So, I feel like they could have, you know, they could have shoved this in there. Heck, I'm just, I'm probably gonna tape it to the, <laughs> to the top here, because at that point, I mean, unless you want a super thin monitor, why wouldn't you integrate this? I'm being picky, but I'm kind of not because of how fat this thing is. So in terms of included stand adjustability, obviously you get a fair degree of height adjustment here. You cannot swing it left to right, but you can tilt it a good ways. So physical features, uh, you got the Gigabyte logo there at the center, and that's pretty much it for branding, which is nice. There's no sticker anywhere that you would remove. Uh, toward the back, we've got another Gigabyte logo up top, not that you're gonna see that much. And then we've got an OSD toggle here. This looks like the only button for uh, menu navigation, which is actually quite nice. I, I like seeing a minimalist approach there. And then toward the bottom right, if you're looking at it from the rear, we've got the G32QC logo marking thing, and I highly doubt Nate's picking that up on camera. Hey, there's another Gigabyte logo. And lastly, gaming series. One of the last things to talk about before we look at picture then, port selection. So we've got two HDMI ports, one display port. You get a headphone jack in here. Two, is it two USB 3 ports? Yep, and then this is where you would connect it to your PC. And then also, of course, your DC input. So we're gonna bump up the refresh rate to 165. Looking good. We're running this on a display port cable. And, uh, we're gonna run some tests now. So one of the first things I like to check with monitors like this is ghosting, and ghosting in a nutshell is the remnant or remnants of a previous frame or previous frames existing on screen longer than they should. So by the time the new frame is drawn on, on the display, uh, the old frame might still be lingering a bit. And this simulation here on uh, testufo.com uh, allows us to see how bad that ghosting is at 165 FPS. 
and uh, it's actually better than I thought it would be. This is one of the better VA panels I've seen from a ghosting perspective. I know you're not really gonna see this translate well on camera, seeing as though you're only looking at the 60 FPS, uh, but to my eye, this isn't bad at all. Now, one of the other features baked into this panel that I do wanna spend some time talking about is the black equalizer. Now, this is not, uh, this is not a gigabyte exclusive technology here, but the point of this is to boost darker scenes or darker spots on a screen uh, without over brightening, you know, already brightened areas. Uh, so I'm gonna try to you know, simulate what that looks like here. Uh, obviously, if you boost this to the max, I mean, your, your whole picture is gonna get blown out, uh, but you, you should be able to give this a few taps up if you think that darks are too dark, and, and you know, if you're playing a game and let's say you've got an opponent that's hiding in a dark space or a dark room, uh, maybe boosting the equalizer just a bit uh, will give you an advantage there, allow you to kind of see in the dark, so to speak, uh, without completely blowing out the brighten areas already. So I think I've got the color profile the way I want here. The contrast is boosted just a bit, uh, added a bit more saturation, not too much though. Uh, kept the normal uh, temperature profile. I think that's fine enough. Uh, this monitor actually has 94% of the DCI-P3 spectrum built in. I think it's 124% of sRGB. So it's actually got a super wide color gamut built in, which makes it, in my opinion, great for content creation, especially. Uh, one thing that's kind of off topic I do want to talk about, monitor wobbles quite a bit. Not sure if that's something you're going to be okay with. Um, you know, if you're typing, even typing, yeah. You're going to get a bit of uh, monitor wobble. I think they need to tighten things up back here. Uh, I know I have. So I, I, it's just the play in the included monitor stand that allows this thing to f just flex too much. It's too much wobble for me. So the color profile I think is fairly impressive for this panel. I'm gonna check dead pixels now. So to start off, we're gonna look for any stuck pixels, pixels that are stuck wide open. I don't see any of them. Let's see, red. Aha, I found one way down there. I don't, I don't know if you can get that. This is a pretty uh, pixel dense panel here, but that is either a dead pixel or a stuck pixel. Let's see if it uh, disappears when we switch to green. Yep, that's gonna be a partially dead pixel is what that is. So it looks like the blue and the green in that pixel, the, the, the sub pixels are good, but uh, the red sub pixel is not. Yep, and that pixel now has like a greenish blue tint to it. That makes perfect sense because there isn't red coming through. All you have is blue and green shining. Next up, we're gonna check for backlight bleed. The only way to do that is to turn off all the lights in the room. That and that. And we do have some light shining through here. I'll try my best to fix that. So it ain't the best. Uh, look, this is Gigabyte's first attempt, and I think that uh, it's acceptable for VA, but this is, again, one of the downsides of choosing a VA panel or an IPS panel. Backlight bleed is not great here. It's especially bad down here. At, for, from your perspective, it would be the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. You can see just above where the OSD would be. Um, that white splotch is not supposed to be there. Also, fair degree of backlight bleed along every corner of the panel. So if you're watching a, a movie and uh, there happens to be black bars on the top and bottom, or if you're just watching an especially dark scene in a movie, this would probably not be very tolerable. Uh, also, when you're playing some games, if you're playing like Resident Evil or something like that, that uh, has many dark scenes, this could bother you just a bit. Just keep in mind, it's what you get with most VA panels. Now in CES 2019, Gigabyte showcased with one of their earlier prototype monitors, something called black frame insertion. Now they're calling it aim assist here. The OSD was just on, it disappeared on me. Uh, but aim assist essentially inserts a black frame every sixth or seventh frame drawn in an effort to reduce the strain on the human eye and make the image look just a bit smoother. Now, as a result of including one black frame every sixth or seventh frame, you can imagine the screen will get noticeably darker. So when we enable frame stabilizer here, the screen should, in theory, darken just a bit, and it certainly is darker. Uh, but they call it aim stabilizer because it's supposed to smooth out the image and make it easier to aim at your opponents in uh, you know, first person shooters, like this is Modern Warfare here. I'm just pulling up some footage from, from YouTube. Uh, but I must say it is not as good as it was 
when I saw it at CES 2019. Now I'm looking at what you guys are seeing on camera and you can actually see the screen flicker. That is not how it looks to the human eye. So to me, it just looks like a smooth image that is slightly darker, but the camera is actually picking up just remnants of one black frame drawn every sixth or seventh frame. And that is why the image is darker. I'm not gonna keep this on much longer because I know that's probably super distracting for you guys. But here, it just, it seems to distort the image a bit more. And because of it, I'm not really going to, I mean, it's not something that I'm gonna say is a, a pro of this panel. I mean, there are some software tweaks that can work out in the future, but this panel as it stands, uh, does not look any better, in my opinion, with aim assist on. And that's a shame because it looked so good back in 2019. That means the last thing to discuss here then, uh, and camera angle is kind of, uh, kind of weird, is price. I thought this panel would cost around four to 450 US dollars. I checked on Newegg though, and you can find this exact model for 370 bucks as of filming, which is like uh, mid-June. That's actually a pretty good price. If this had been a 1080p panel, I would have said it was a little expensive, but for 1440p, it's a 1500R panel, it's a 165 hertz panel, it is a VA panel. I don't think 370 bucks is a bad price at all, especially for this being Gigabyte's first monitor. Now the few things I would change, the wobbling, the tolerance here, it's just too much for the included stand that needs to be fixed, even if I'm just like barely moving the desk. See, that monitor is shaking. That's that's too much. Uh, the aim assist, I think, needs to be completely rebuilt from the ground up. I don't like the way that it looks now, and I think that if they saw what I saw in person, maybe it's just this particular panel, but this is all I can speak to, um, then they would agree with me that it did, it did not look good. It looked nowhere near as good as what we saw at CES. And the integration of the AC adapter, it's the other nitpick that I have, only because the monitor is fairly thick. Uh, so. 370 bucks, if you're willing to look past those things, maybe the backlight bleed, but that's kind of typical of most VA panels. I'd say this is a pretty darn good price. I would be perfectly fine gaming on this panel. Granted, I'm not the biggest fan of 32 inches, but at least they stepped up the resolution to 1440p to make up for some of that resolution uh, loss. I guess I should say the, the distance loss, because as you increase the size of a screen, you have to move further back to see the same pixel density, so to speak. Anyway, you guys can find this one linked below. Uh, it's gonna be on Newegg for sure. I'm not sure if it's on Amazon, uh, but I, I think that the price is fairly competitive. If you want to shop around, I'll link a few other monitors we've reviewed in this price range down below as well. Let me know what you think about the monitor in the comment section. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, click that subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name's Greg, thanks for learning with me.